Welcome back to another CBM Analyst video. And today we're going to also do Marvel 2022 Slate Breakdown. I already did the DCEU one, so if you want to go check that out, the link should be up top right there somewhere. You know, that little I button thing, it should be right there. But pretty much Marvel has a big slate of stuff coming out. Not particularly movies or shows, and to be quite honest, it's not going to be as important of a year for Marvel as compared to DC. But overall, I think this is a pretty interesting yet fun lineup. There's some, let's just say there's a lot of projects that have some controversy for Marvel, but for the most part, they were able to handle 2021 well for the most, for, you know, for a good while. They were able to have a total of three box office hits with Black Widow, Shang-Chi, and Spider-Man. And Eternals was able to, at the very least, break even. And let's not talk about their domination on streaming, for the exception of What If and Hawkeye not doing as well as WandaVision, The Falcon, and Winter Soldier, and Loki. Besides that, Marvel seems to be pretty good this year. So let's get into movies and all the Disney Plus projects, and let's see what Marvel has come kicking up for this year. In terms of the movies, we are going to be kicking it off with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Funny enough, this is the only MCU project that we know is coming up that has a confirmed release date after Spider-Man. And speaking of Spider-Man, this is really connected to Spider-Man because the events of No Way Home will impact the events of Doctor Strange 2. Now, uh, we saw in the trailer, which was the end credit scene of No Way Home, that there are going to be a lot of consequences to Doctor Strange's actions with messing around with the multiverse due to doing the forgetting spell for Peter. To doing... To, for doing... That's better. For doing the forgetting spell for Peter. However, Doctor Strange will not remember Peter Parker anyway, so he's probably going to remember that he did something with Spider-Man, which caused the multiverse to break. Anyways, it seems like Scarlet Witch might be the main villain, as she might be exploring the multiverse to find any alternate versions of her family, particularly Tommy and Billy. And Tommy and Billy are pretty important characters for the Young Avengers, so I wouldn't be surprised if Marvel tries to pull them into this movie. On top of that, there are a plethora of Marvel cameos that are supposed to be in this movie. And I'm not talking about MCU. I'm talking about the old, old, old school Marvel movies from the early 2000s, like the Fantastic Four, Blade, uh, I guess Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. I mean, hey, he did pop up in No Way Home. Sorry for the spoilers, but at this point, you should have know that we were going to talk about that anyways. So there seems to be a whole lot of craziness. It, it, uh, craziness, just bleh. It's madness. The multiverse of madness. I can't even talk right now. We have had the introduction of America Chavez, and Wong is really going to be the Sorcerer Supreme, which is something that Spider-Man No Way Home alluded to, but I feel like we'll probably have a bigger role or bigger thing in Doctor Strange 2 about how Strange has lost Sorcerer Supreme. Sam Raimi is expected to direct this movie and it is going to release on May 6, 2022 if all of this COVID nonsense doesn't really impact it, which it shouldn't because Doctor Strange is going to be in the summer, not around the winter time. Thor Love and Thunder will be the next movie after Doctor Strange 2. And we do know a whole lot of stuff about Thor Love and Thunder. For starters, this will be the introduction of Lady Thor, who will be played by Natalie Portman, who's reprising her role as Jade Foster. I wasn't the biggest fan of Jade Foster as a character in the Thor movies, but hopefully Thor Love and Thunder makes me change my mind. I'm pretty open to having two Thors um, go together because Lady Thor isn't going to replace the main Thor uh they're going to be coexisting hopefully i'm right about that prediction valkyrie they're actually going to play up the bisexualness of her character which is cool at the very least korg is coming back and of course probably my favorite part of this entire movie even though it's not about them the guardians of the galaxy will have a little role in thor love and thunder and there have been set photos that have confirmed that indeed the guardians of the galaxy are actually going to be in this movie maybe not for the majority of the movie they might be having a role like dr strange did in thor ragnarok where he appears for a 
small bit, but then he's not really a part of the main story. Also, we know that Gore the God Butcher is going to be the main villain, and if you've been reading the recent Thor comics, you know that Gore the God Butcher is a pretty big character for Thor in these modern stories, and he is indeed heavily connected to the Lady Thor storyline in the comics. Now, whether they choose to give Jane cancer would be an interesting thing. Would Marvel go there? We would have to see. On top of that, Gorth the God Butcher is going to be played by Christian freaking Bale. Freaking Batman is playing Gore the God Butcher, so that's going to be awesome. American Psycho, like, this is going to be pretty interesting. And Taika Waititi has confirmed, or at least has been hyping, that Thor Love and Thunder is going to be even more crazier and wild than Thor Ragnarok. And if you have seen Thor Ragnarok, that's going to be a pretty tough thing to do. But seeing all the stuff that we've seen of Love and Thunder, including concept art that did leak of Thor and Lady Thor's new suit, I am not going to be surprised at all about any of that happening um, with this movie. Going up next is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. This is going to be a November... Uh, this is gonna be what November eleventh, I believe. Uh, well, guess what? Uh, I forgot to mention Thor: Love and Thunder. That's gonna be July eighth. But anyways, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever is a movie that I was originally excited for before the passing of Chadwick Boseman. Now I am very burnt out by this movie, and by this point, production has been over delayed. And with the Omnicron surge, and with the whole fighting in set, I'm not really going to get into the drama. Uh, the drama. Well, there might, it might be traumatic for Ryan Coogler, but also the drama that's been going on set for Black Panther 2. A lot of the controversial takes they're doing with this. I'm not really going to get into it all, but Marvel has at the very least promised that they are going to honor the legacy of Chadwick Boseman which has been confirmed by Marvel. They've also confirmed that they will not be recasting T'Challa. Whether this is a bad move or a good move on Marvel's part, we will see with how they continue the Black Panther franchise after Wakanda Forever because we do have a Wakanda series that is expected to be in the works somewhere. In terms of the rumors, it is rumored that Shuri will take up the mantle of Black Panther, like in the comics. However, due to some headlines from the actress, it seems like this might not be a permanent change, so we'll have to see how they will, again, find a way to continue the Black Panther legacy without the character of T'Challa, and especially if Letitia Wright is not willing to continue to be Black Panther for a long period of time after this movie. Also, it is rumored that Namor, the Submariner, and Atlantis will be the main villains of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and that seems to be true since we have been getting some casting rumors, and they seem to be pretty legit that they are indeed doing Namor and Atlantis versus Black Panther and Wakanda, and that would have been such an interesting thing. In my opinion, I am pretty sad that they're not going to continue the character T'Challa, and although Chadwick Boseman did play the character well, and to be honest, it would be hard for anybody to fill in his shoes, I do feel like Marvel should, at the very least, have reconsidered and possibly Kareek as T'Challa. I'm not saying that this person would be better than Chadwick Boseman. Obviously, Chadwick Boseman's legacy as Black Panther and how he played the character is just iconic. But I feel like it's such a waste of potential to also cap the character of T'Challa, especially since that we barely even scratched the surface with the amount of stories that you could do with his character. But we'll have to hope that Marvel will know what they're doing. Just right now, with all the recent news of Wakanda Forever, it seems a little bit like shaky ground. Also, fun fact, this will be Marvel Studios' 30th film ever released, so hopefully for their big 30, they don't release a turd. And I really hope Black Panther is not a big turd. I don't think it will be, hopefully. Again, we just gotta put those hopes up that Marvel knows what they're doing. But that's it for movies. Now we have to get onto the streaming, and there is a whole lot of stuff that is coming to streaming services when it comes to Marvel. When it comes to Disney+, Plus, the show that is supposedly going to be right after Hawkeye and before Doctor Strange 2, 
by the rumors is Moon Knight, which is planned to have a February or March release date. And I do believe this because I think that would be perfect for Moon Knight. Moon Knight seems to be the show that is the most completed and ready to go. I mean, they completed filming on Moon Knight a while ago, and I would assume that they are just touching up the visual effects for the episodes as we speak right now. And so Moon Knight is indeed ready to go. This is probably my most anticipated Disney Plus show, probably of the entire lineup that Marvel has planned because the character of Moon Knight is so unpredictable and crazy. I don't know everything about the character, but what I have researched about him, he is a pretty interesting character, and I do feel like he would be right up my alley in terms of humor. Very, very dark humor. Anyways, I think Moon Knight is going to be a blast, and I have high hopes for Oscar Isaac and how he's going to kill it Has Mark Spector, Ethan Hawke, and the third personality of the Moon Knight that I'm forgetting for some reason, Stephen Grant. I'm pretty sure. Or I probably fucked up everything. There are three different personalities to Moon Knight. I don't remember all their names. I do know that Mark Spector is like the main one, so sorry if I mixed up the other ones. Anyways, Moon Knight is expected to be an early 2022 release, so hopefully we do get more information of Moon Knight. And an actual freaking trailer for Moon Knight. But the footage they showed at Disney Plus Day was pretty badass. Next up, it is She-Hulk. And this show is going to be more of a comedy series. Which I'm okay with seeing the character She-Hulk applies herself to comedy. It has been way more of a comedic character than a super serious character. I'm sorry. Just the people that are mad that She-Hulk is going to be a comedy show clearly don't know who the character is and although this might be a comedy show that focuses on she-hulk being a lawyer and with rumors that matt murdoch will pop up in this show being a little bit more valid seeing that we also saw him in spider-man no way home so i'm not gonna be too blown away if matt murdoch does show up it does make sense it is a show that is focusing on lawyers superhero lawyers even also, Bruce Banner is coming back. Mark Ruffalo is returning. Has Smart Hulk, Smart Hulk, or Professor Hulk, whatever one you want to call it, and he is also returning. Has regular Bruce Banner. We have seen this form of Bruce Banner return in Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So maybe She Hulk could explain what's going on with Bruce and why he's changing out from Professor Hulk to regular Bruce Banner. We also have confirmation that. Tim Roth will be returning as the Abomination. Now, we already saw Abomination again in Shang-Chi as well, so maybe She-Hulk could explore what Abomination has been doing all this time since the first Incredible Hulk movie. And maybe, just maybe, they might bring back the leader. I'm pretty hopeful they would finally wrap up that loose end that the Incredible Hulk left all the way back in 2008, hopefully, but I highly doubt that. But hey... If anything, these Marvel Disney Plus shows have shown us that anything and everything can happen in them, except actual importance into the main MCU movie storyline, for the exception of WandaVision and Loki. Secret Invasion is a show that I will probably get more excited for when we get to see footage. For now, I'm okay with this show. I don't really have any hype. I don't really have any experience expectation for it but secret evasion in the comics is one of the biggest storylines that marvel has ever done probably on a similar scale to civil war in terms of storylines that marvel is adapting for what it does but this is a pretty big storyline this is supposed to be an espionage series this is going to star samuel L. jackson as nick fury and my, the guy from Captain Marvel. I'm sorry that I forgot his name. I don't really feel like Googling it. But the guy that plays Talos. I'm so sorry. I probably offended a guy that is probably one of the best actors. Ben's Milkelson. I fucked up his name. But that's his name. And they are going to co-star with each other. And they're going to find out who's a squirrel and who's not. And maybe we'll have some fun. Who knows? There's been some rumors that Sharon Carter... Or at least theories. I wouldn't say rumors. There's been theories that Sharon Carter is actually a... Sh I was about to say S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Of course, she used to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Sharon Carter is, in fact, 
a scroll because of how weird she was acting in the Falcon Winter Soldier, and there is some validness to this theory. But who knows? This will be the fun part. Who's a scroll and who's not? And maybe some heroes that we've been following around the MCU for a while is a scroll, and the others are just not scrolls. We'll have to see. Who knows? Secret Invasion, literally anything could happen. Literally anything can happen. So we'll have to wait and see. The Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special is probably my second most anticipated Disney Plus project of all time. And no, this is not me making a joke. I am super serious. For starters, this will have an actual semi-impact into the upcoming story for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is my most anticipated Phase 4 movie of all time. Second, this is going to be a blast. James Gunn's writing and directing and having the Guardians do a silly and fun holiday special themed TV movie just seems great to me, especially seeing that they are going to parody Star Wars Holiday Special. So I do hope they take a lot of creative liberties with this Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. We don't even know the plot, but just knowing James Gunn and knowing the, well, the project that it is parodying, I have extremely high hopes for this, and I am actually pretty excited for it because it's so out there and it's so creative and i do love the guardians of the galaxy so i'm biased so yes i am actually excited for the guardians of the galaxy holiday special don't at me yes i'm more excited for this the she hulk and the upcoming other disney plus projects that are not named spider-man freshman year so please leave me alone thank you Finally, we got Miss Marvel. This has been getting a whole lot of controversy due to Marvel changing up the character's powers. It also seems like Miss Marvel might not even be an inhuman, which is a big part of her story in the comics. Me personally, I knew that they were going to try to avoid Miss Marvel as an inhuman due to the failure of the 2017 Inhumans show. I suggested that they could possibly make Miss Marvel a mutant. I mean, sure, it's not going to be the exact same as an Inhuman, but the basic idea of Kamala Khan's arc and storyline would still be the same, even if she is just a mutant. But anyways, it seems like she is going to get her powers, and her powers are going to be a little bit more similar in the vein of Captain Marvel and Photon, and this is probably because they want to match her up and sync her up with those characters in the upcoming the marvels movie yes marvel studios is making a movie called the marvels which stars captain marvel's main actress brie larson yeah that's gonna be a tongue twister all right i can't wait to tell my friends hey are you guys excited to see the marvels and they'd be like what marvel made a movie about the marvels are you shitting me but yeah miss marvel God, this is going to be a tongue twister. Eh, I'm not that excited for it, to be honest. I do love the character of Kamala Khan, and I do think her story is very, very interesting. But so far, from what we're getting and what a lot of news outlets have been saying, it doesn't seem that Disney and Marvel fully understood what made Miss Marvel so popular in the first place. So hopefully they get their act together and Miss Marvel is good. I do want all of these projects, movies, shows, whatever, to all be good good at the end of the day even if i'm not in terribly excited in terribly i just made a new word even though i'm not terribly excited for a couple of these but overall 2022 seems to be an even stronger year than 2021 we'll have to see where the dice rolls for the marvel universe but anyways what are you guys most excited about what is your most anticipated movie and what is your most anticipated disney plus project coming this year tell me in the comments down below and i'll see you guys in the next video peace psych i lied i don't say peace anymore i'm just gonna say see you later